All right, all right, here we are. Let's get us all situated. There we go. All right, let's do this the right way. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, we got a different screen there on Jimmy, but that's yeah. okay. We'll figure it out. But uh, how are you, Jimmy? I'm doing fine. Uh, well, as fine as you can expect. Uh, it's We're expecting a major hurricane coming to town. So uh, let's put it in proper perspective. I'll let you know next week how well I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, well, we, we've got Hurricane Milton uh, showing up and... Uh, it's uh, it's gonna be something. Uh, it, it really is. And um, uh, I know that my family up in Illinois, they're like, okay, should we send you a, a, a ticket? What should we do? It's like, you'll be fine. I'll be fine. We'll all be fine. And uh, it's not my very first uh, hurricane. I, I've been here since um, 2015, and um, I've lived through some hurricanes, so. Why not write this one out? Well, but you didn't. You didn't live through Charlie, and Charlie was the last Category Three that hurt, hit us directly. Yeah. And I mean, hit us directly. After that, I had to replace my roof, and after that, I had to. Uh, I was a week without electricity. But other than that, everything else was. I don't know what can I say. No electricity for one week, and that was not 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 exact. A whole week was not exactly something. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't think that anyone would want to go through that a whole week, Jimmy. Wow. Yeah. The only good thing that might happen now is that we're in October and it's not going to be as hot outside. But lately, I'm not sure because lately it's, it's kind of been hot. It really has. So we're not right. in October. You can say, well, it's in the 80s. No, no. Our Octobers have been in the 90s. So we'll, we'll yeah, see. I, I find that kind of strange. It's like really warm. Yeah, and I was out on my balcony because it's still you know nice out today and uh, sunny and you know we're not expecting the hurricane or bad weather to approach us until Wednesday tomorrow or so. Uh, but I was like, whoa, I am set. I'm sweating just sitting here on my balcony, and I was like, I know it's the afternoon and everything, but uh, I'm going back inside. Wow. Yeah, that's climate not- change for you. Yeah. So we'll so, find out. Right. So what we have coming up now, um, we talked about uh, a host of things, the candidates, early voting, uh, particularly vote by mail, which is different from early voting, but it is early voting. Uh, in about a week, um, October 21st, um, we have early voting starting uh, here Correct. in Florida. And... Um, how does that work out for us here in, in, in Florida, Jimmy? Well, in Florida, like contrary to what most people would think, between early voting and voting by mail has surpassed Election Day. In the past, it right. didn't, but it has. Particularly for people 40, 45, all the way up to 65 and younger, they don't mind voting by mail. As a matter of fact, I like to joke that you take away uh, from a, a person under the age of 50 their phone, they don't have a life. They cannot get a, into an airport because they don't have their airline tickets. They cannot uh, pay for their for their food because they don't have they don't have a, a credit card. They have them all connected to their phone. So basically for them to receive something in the mail and vote by mail is something that to them is something they don't think of. I mean, I know a couple of people who told me that they have never gone to vote into it, a, a, a precinct. They just, ever since they started voting, they received it by mail. They still do. I know really? people tell me that they've, ne- they've never gone into a precinct on election day, that they go early voting and, uh, and they go either Saturday or Sunday or like I do. I go to my stamp club and uh, in, in the Mark Senior Center. And before I go into the stamp club meeting, they, they have six people waiting for me to just to vote, and I vote in a matter of two minutes. So it's it's really uh, the convenience. So people who say, I vote on election day, those numbers are reducing. And that's why when people tell me, well, there's so many days for elections, not really. Technically, right now, at least 
I think close to 20% of the population of Orange County has received their ballots by mail. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's 20% of the total election. Uh, so if another 25 to uh, 30% of people do early voting those 10 days prior to the election, now you're in your 55. Now you're uh, above. And the problem is that we're using numbers of voters that are registered. But when you take them down to people who voted per se, it's much higher. The people who vote by mail and who vote uh, er early voting. And that's why I'm surprised. Uh-oh, Jimmy. We lost your volume there, Jimmy. Pro, Jimmy, uh, oh, yeah. there you go. We lost your volume there for, for a little bit, Jimmy. Okay. If, yeah. if you could go back about maybe a, a minute of what you were saying um, after the 20% of vote by mail, um, people are receiving vote by mail represented by 20%. And then you have at least 30% of people who are registered vote on uh, early voting. That should be 50%. The question is at the end of the day that 50% is really 50% because with the turnout it, we do not know if that's going to be more of a like a 55 to 60% so really at this point people are voting mostly by mail and they're voting early voting as a matter of fact there's churches who that Sunday make a, a function let's get in the bus and let's go and vote uh, especially in the African American community in the Hispanic community, not so much, but it, it happens there. So at this point, it is interesting to see how these things are going. But again, I have not received anything. And I'm a super voter. I think I have one thing from a, a pro Amendment 3 and one against Amendment 4. That's it. That's it. The whole mails I have received, and that includes to the Alphonse residents, which includes my wife, who also is a super voter. So uh, it's, it's surprising that none of the campaigns have done anything. I haven't had nobody knock on my doors. I'm not counting anybody to knock on my doors the next two days for reasons that I should not uh, have to mention. But yeah, cool. it, it, so it's kind of co concerning. What are the campaigns doing? That's a good point. Uh, and I'll speak to that. Uh, however, I want to go with your earlier statement about early voting and vote by mail, how uh, both are becoming a larger percentage of the turnout. And Democrats have uh, 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 embraced the idea of getting out early and, and, and voting at the early voting locations. And even more importantly, in the convenience of vote by mail uh, receiving it uh, in the comfort of your home and uh, making your decisions, informed decisions there. And, uh, and, and bravo, bravo for um, the Democratic Party and individual campaigns focusing on that early vote. Uh, Republicans uh, are, are now coming around to early voting. I've Even in the primary, the August 2024 primary, uh, looking at that data, I did see, Jimmy, um, that uh, a good portion of the Republicans are still waiting until Election Day. Okay, okay. However, like the situation we're looking at right now with Hurricane Milton and even Hurricane Helene, the, the damage that Helene has caused in some communities and the potential damage that Hurricane Milton will cause, you would think that there would be more emphasis right now or even a week ago or a week and a half ago by all the parties, all the political parties and all of the campaigns to say, hey, we are monitoring the weather just like everyone else is. And we are here in Florida in the peak of the season for hurricanes. And that this should be built into their campaigns that October, November anticipate a hurricane to affect voting that could affect 
election day voting. So therefore, more attention should be paid to early voting and vote by mail. And also, like you just said, speaking to the point about receiving very little information from the campaigns. Um, I've had one person come to my door uh, on Sunday uh, in the rain, which surprised me, uh, to talk to me about supporting uh, Amendment uh, Number 4, the abortion uh, ballot initiative. Uh, otherwise, nothing in the mail, nothing else on my door. It's like we're not even campaigning. We're, there's no election on its way. Uh, especially if you're not watching, you know, television or or uh, looking at your social media or uh, scouring the web, the internet. Uh, if you weren't doing those things, you'll you probably wouldn't know that there's an election coming up. No, you won't. And and the sad part is, I don't think that not only do they, do, I think that sometimes they say. Well, I don't need to send to this person something because he's a registered Democrat, or I don't need to send to this person something because he's a registered Republican. Realistically, still in Orange County, our elections are not partisan. Uh, in the state of Florida, the amendments, some of them, uh, to be quite honest, uh, do not, they transcend party lines. They really do. Right. I mean, I don't think that Republicans are, uh, are against uh, uh, Amendment 4, as well as I don't think that Republicans are against Amendment 3. But for some reason, people think that the only people who would be in favor of those two would be Democrats. Well, that's not true. It is, it is not true. Uh, I, I remember uh, the other day I was joking with one of my friends. I said, my, one, one of my biggest uh, people who, that I know who, who uses a, a uh, uh, Snoop, Dogg, uh, what I would like to call my Snoop Dogg in, in my group, he's a Republican and he loves his, his wacky weed. I mean, so okay. uh, <laughs> and he ha he smokes his his wacky weed with a Trump hat on. So you know, uh, to be quite honest, I, I'm I'm not sure that people tend to think that these things are 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 are, are, are one thing or the other. So at this point, realistically, yeah. I think that they should be more knocking on the door, more calling. And for some reason, there's no emails and there's no text either. And, 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 and yeah. those things that says, now the only text I receive constantly to the point that I, I could, you know, just say enough is enough is Kamala and Walls. Those people sure. every five minutes are sending me an email. Hey, could you give me some money? They could go up to 900%. If you give me $2, they'll give me $20 over here. So I'm not going like, yeah, no. So it's, yeah, that, that's the only text that we are receiving by, by great numbers. I have received some email from Kelly, I'll be honest. None from Steve. Uh, nothing from Debbie. And nothing mm. from uh, anybody else. So, yeah. I, again, as I stated before, Jimmy, this is uh, quite the odd uh, campaign cycle, um, whether it's on the national level with uh, the Democrats dropping Biden and inserting, you know, Kamala Harris as their nominee with just um, weeks before the Democratic National Convention uh, to the actual assassination attempt on former president Donald J. Trump to the almost attempt on his life, uh, attempt on the assassination attempt of his life at Mar-a-Lago. Um, it, it's been quite the strange election cycle and just the the lack of uh, 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 effort, yeah. I guess. The lack of effort of campaigns to um, persuade voters, uh, you know, again, uh, if I'm getting text messages or emails, they're going into a spam folder. Um, if uh, I'm getting um, ads served to me on social media, my personal social media, I'm not seeing it because I really don't use my personal social media as often as I do my business social media. 
Um, the, the door to door canvassing, I'm not seeing any of it uh, for the general election. Uh, I, I'll see, you know, yard signs as I walk through my neighborhood, uh, which is, you know, for the most part, uh, it was dominated by uh, conservative candidates and issues. Uh, but I'm seeing more of the, um, uh, what is it, the uh, Kamala Harris uh, uh, campaign yard signs. Um, and then, uh, yes on three or yes on four, uh, pretty much a, a, a balance. Um, but for the most part, um, not even the phone call, Jimmy. And has one in front of the yard who wants to tell the whole world, this is the way I believe about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't care what you believe in. I don't care about your feelings. This is I'm spraying to the world that I'm for this candidate, good, wrong and different, particularly those people who have their Trump signs out there. They know that there's a lot of people who might not like their signs, but they don't give. That's paper. right. So they, they just so. But it, it is interesting because as of now. People have already voted for candidates for president of the United States in Florida and in 20 other states. We're not Correct. the only state that does this. So uh, it's going to be interesting because for some reason, people think that uh, this election is going to be decided on election day. Well, no, I like to look at it this way. That's the last day that you could vote. And that's the last the day they're going to start counting votes. Other than that, I don't think that any of these elections are going to be decided that day. Okay? I agree. I agree with you. <coughs> Excuse me, Jimmy. I agree with you. Um, I don't think we'll see anything close to the presidential election uh, being uh, decided or, 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 again, anything close to it being decided until maybe December 11th when the states have to um, certify their individual vote and send them off to Congress. Um we're looking at a very close race. I do not see anything, Jimmy, close to the activity uh, that I saw uh, in the 2016 election between um, candidate Trump and Secretary um, Hillary Clinton. Uh, no activity. Uh, I, I When I was canvassing uh, for Emily Bonilla, um, I saw the Hillary uh, candidates out there. I saw the Trump um, canvassers out there. Uh, so, but but now, Jimmy, it's it's again, it's like I there's no no campaigning going on, very little. And, and, and we can't blame it on the pandemic. It's maybe that, exactly. and this is what I'm going to predict. I think that a lot of the campaigns have mistook mistaken that social media is where they need to be, that social media is where they're going to get their people, that uh, we don't need to knock door to door. We don't need not need to uh, do anything. We put ads on Facebook. We put ads on TikTok. We put ads on uh, what you call it? Instagram. YouTube, Instagram, YouTube. YouTube. And, and that should be good enough. Uh, nobody reads the mail. Uh, that's true. But I'll give you an example of the other thing that I want to answer to that. Look, moron, I don't click on a thing that I don't want to see on YouTube or on Instagram. Let's get that. You could try to sell me something. Sure. And I could turn you off. Or mm -hmm. if you could, if you, there's still some people who have not been able to take off the ad from YouTube and Instagram, well, you might get those, but I'm not sure how effective you're going to be anyway, because it's going to, you might be spending your money on a Trump ad person. You might be spending a, a, an ad that Steve Lurie's going to open and he says, why would I want to vote for Kelly? Uh, and so on. So basically it is a hit and run, and I don't see the great difference between that and, and a mailer. I really don't. You're, it's a hit or miss still. Mm -hmm. So uh, thinking that social media is more effective because it, you like it, 
that's your personal taste, and I respect that. Right. But I, I don't see that if you, if your campaign people are thinking we're going to eliminate everything else and just concentrate on social media, let me respond to this way. You do not drop everything and just go one route. If you do that, you lose the race. Simple. Sorry. I, I agree with you, Jimmy. Um, I, social media has its place um, for um, – Campaign management, I did not embrace it as early as a lot of people did in their um, campaigns. Um, it wasn't until maybe the last uh, four years that I've embraced um, social media as an important part of getting out the vote, especially the early vote. Mm-hmm. Um, social media does have a place along with everything else in your campaign you know, tool belt. It does have a place. As you said, you can't over rely on social media. Sure. Facebook may have, you know, a billion um, active subscribers or a billion subscribers. Excellent. However, as I told uh, Joe Lopez in his uh, campaign for sheriff in 2000, um, when you look at the... um, when, when you look at the analytics, or, or was it 2002? I can't remember. When you look at the analytics of Facebook, when you go under the hood and find out who your voters are, you really couldn't. You, you don't know. It'll tell you, you know, how many people are following his page, subscribe to his page. That's great. You can have 20,000 followers. Okay, let's take a, 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 a closer look at that. Okay, wow. It tells us that maybe 2,000 of those 20,000 actually live in the county that he's running for office in. So there's that. Well, I said, let's look a little further. Can Facebook tell us how many of those 2,000 are actual registered voters, verifiable, active, registered voters. Facebook could not tell us that at that time. I'm sure Facebook has caught up uh, to dynamics of um, of uh, uh, elections and, and, and voter databases. I don't know. I don't really rely on reaching my uh, voters completely through um, social media. There's that's why we do the digital canvassing, where we reach our voters um, outside of the walled gardens like Facebook and Instagram and so forth and so on. Um, but the reliance, the heavy reliance on, on 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 social media, will take you just so far. Not everyone is on. A Facebook or Instagram um, or TikTok um, or LinkedIn or even YouTube. Uh, so, you, so candidates, if they want to get out there and win the election early, they better have a very comprehensive and thorough campaign strategy of reaching their voters. Yeah. And, and what I'm trying to say is, look, I would not say spend all your money in yard signs. That's stupid. And I mm-hmm. would call it that. If you say spend all your money in putting in ads uh, and selling mailers, that is stupid too. You you have something in Instagram, you have something in Facebook, you have something in YouTube and TikTok, and that's fine. And you hope that it gets out, but you can't count on that. But there's no substitute for, and I hate to say this, direct mail, the, knocking on doors, yeah. Making sure that you try to find a way to call these people, make yeah. a way that even uh, that you, you that they see you at an activity near their, their, their home that they, they would like to see you. But other than that, people are too much relying on the analytics that tells you that so many people saw this. Yeah, uh, I'll give you an example. I, I know of three campaigns who would uh, do the following. They would go on YouTube, they would go on Instagram, they would go on TikTok, and they would go even on Facebook and either like or subscribe just so they know what their opposition is doing. Not that they're going to vote for you, but to know. And then 
I remember one campaign had about five people looking into somebody's Facebook page just to make sure that anything that they were doing, they should be aware of it and be prepared how to counteract it. Uh, so you have five people who might be in your county, who might even be registered voters, who really are not there to check, to to vote for you or something like that. Uh, I remember the old days of Facebook that people would just accept anybody as a friend just so they could say they had a million friends. Exactly, yes. Okay, so I, 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 I'll send a candidate, hey, you want to be my friend? Sure, I'll be your friend. You want to be my friend? Sure. And that, that candidate might think, oh, I got... Uh, 200,000 people want to be my friend. No, they really want more numbers in, in, in Facebook. They don't care about you. Uh, so exactly. It, so it, it is understanding the beast that you're involved with. Now, with that in mind, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. How do you feel about November and the presidential race? Jimmy, right now, um, if November 5th was uh, tomorrow, um I believe it would be uh, a close race. Each candidate uh, would receive uh, the typical, you know, uh, states uh, that they are were expected uh, to receive. Um, now that now that that's those uh, votes have been allocated to those respective uh, campaigns. Uh, California is going to go for. Uh, Vice President Harris, Florida is going to go for Donald Trump. Um, now that we got that out of the way, we have the handful of um, swing states. Um, Wisconsin is one of them. I see Wisconsin going for Trump. Uh, if we throw North Carolina, North Carolina into the mix as a swing state, I see North Carolina going for Donald Trump. Uh, we throw um, Arizona into the mix. I see Arizona going to Donald Trump. So there's three right there. We've got uh, Pennsylvania. We have Michigan. And we have Georgia. So if there was a battle, it would be in those three states. I see Georgia going for Vice President Harris. I see Michigan going for Vice President Harris. It boils down to Pennsylvania, and uh, I have to say it will go for Vice President Harris. Uh, I think a lot has to do would have to do with Governor Shapiro. And uh, there's your election right there. Uh, the election will go to Vice President Kamala Harris. She will be your 47th president of the United States. Well, I differ with you in a little bit. I can't say with certainty which way Wisconsin and North Carolina are going to go. I can't. Okay. I would have to say that if tomorrow was November 5th, I would give Wisconsin to Kamala and I would give North Carolina to Trump. Uh, okay. The one that also, I'm not certain that people really can predict it. I think this is the last time around that Arizona might go for Kamala. After this, really? no. After this, they elected an incumbent, uh, an incompetent person to be the supervisor of election in, in, in Phoenix, Arizona, which would have no problem staying the election. The only problem is that if Kamala wins this election, I don't see Donald Trump running at 84. I just don't, I mean, at 82, I don't see that happening. Sure. I, but, uh, th but then again, uh, some of the people that might get the thing are as bad or even worse than he is. Mm. I, I, I see your point. Did did we mention Nevada? 
Oh, Nevada, I, I got that for Camelot. Different. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. The the I believe uh, the Republican parties in uh, Nevada and also in Michigan uh, were in disarray earlier in the election cycle. I really don't see them recovering. The same could be said of the uh, Arizona uh, Republican Party. There was a, a division uh, amongst the ranks, which could also affect uh, uh, President Trump's uh, um, ability to win that state. Correct. Yep. But I, 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 I'm thinking. I, I see Georgia maybe throwing the wrench into things. Uh, however, I see Pennsylvania as the swing state of swing states um, that would uh, that uh, would uh, deliver for uh, uh, Vice President Harris uh, giving her the total victory. And let's not forget that also in Pennsylvania, the Republican Party was in total disarray. Mm -hmm. Right, they, right. They, they nominated the wrong candidate for the House, I mean, for governor and even for the Senate. That's right. That's right. I, I forget about that. That that was a hot mess. Uh, two candidates uh, who were definitely MAGA candidates supported by the former president, and uh, they, they got destroyed. So, um, yeah, yeah, this, it, you know, just on paper. Just on first appearance. This is my first time doing this uh, for this uh, cycle. Um, I've always said that uh, Biden would win re-election, uh, even though he's not running. Um, the quantitative historical data supports a uh, Vice President Kamala Harris win in November. Yeah, but if Biden was our candidate, it, we could have guaranteed that it would have been Donald Trump. I I still I still differ on that. I really do, Jimmy. I hey, I I'm, I'm not a big supporter of any of the candidates. However, I am a big supporter. I believe in loyalty. Loyalty means so much to me. And so, I'm a big supporter of loyalty to your candidate to your community, to your family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very disappointed that they threw President Biden under the bus, even though he had a shitty um, performance uh, in the first debate. I like the I, way you say shitty. I would say <laughs> an embarrassment, a a shit, not a shitty, a shit uh, uh, thing. I mean, it, let me put it this way. Loyalty aside. Mm -hmm. When you ask somebody, hey, vote for this person who mentally is incompetent, but because he was a half-decent senator and a half-decent president, let's keep him. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something that politically could have, could have been sold. And, it really but, can. and so here's my counter argument, Jimmy. If he's incompetent and vote you know, the 25th Amendment or whatever it is. I mean, if he's incompetent, why is he in charge right now? Get him out right now. Let, and, and this was my argument when they tapped uh, Kamala to succeed him. It's like, okay, make her president now. Let's go. Let's, sh let's let her demonstrate that she is competent. Then my mother's like, why does she have to demonstrate she's competent? Is it because she's a black woman? It's like, well, mom, she's not black. I mean, she is a woman, but that's a whole different story. I say, like, hey, just give her the reins right now. Let's go. If Democrats really, really want it, okay. let's do, go. Do, do, you know, do you know how the, tw the 25th Amendment really works? No. <laughs> and I do. Hey, wait, this, if you give me a moment, <laughs> I do have my pocket constitution. Go to the Twenty Fifth Amendment. Read it because it's it's one of those. Let me make you feel good <laughs> of something that's never going to happen. Let me okay. give you some bullshit that's never going to happen. Right. So, Section One: In case of the removal of the president from office, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the vice president shall become president. That we know. That we know. Section Section Two: Whenever there is a vacancy in the office of the vice president, the president shall nominate a vice president who shall take office upon confirmation by the majority vote of both houses of Congress. Okay. And we know that was Gerald Ford. Not a problem. Yes, correct. Okay. Section Three: 
whenever the president transmits to the president pro tempore of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives his written declaration that he is unable to, to discharge the powers and duties of his office, and until he transmits to them a written declaration to the contrary, such powers and duties shall be discharged by the vice president as acting president. So there's that. Section three. Like Biden was going to find, send a letter saying, I'm incompetent. That was never going to happen, okay? Jill had no intentions of letting that one happen. Exactly. Okay, what's exactly. the other one? And so section four, this is the longest one. I'll uh, try to cut to the chase here. Whenever the vice president and the majority of either the principal officers of the executive departments or of <laughs> such other body as Congress may by law provide, transmit to the president pro tempore of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives their written declaration that the president is unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office, the vice president shall immediately assume the powers and duties of the office as acting president. So this, if the vice president and majority of the principal officers, officers of executive departments or such other body as Congress may allow to provide. So I guess the secretary of state, the secretary of transportation, the cabinet. Yeah, or, and like they are going to have the guts. To even insinuate, let, 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 let's put this in a practical sense. Okay, yeah. you sit them down and let's say there's 32, just to make up a number. Okay, mm -hmm. not saying that that's the exact number, but 32. Mm -hmm. And 15 say, we need to remove this guy. This guy is gone. And 17 say, no. How long will the 15 still be secretaries after that meeting? Maybe two <laughs> minutes. <laughs> They'll be replaced like that. So would you have the guts of taking a vote on something that might cost you your job and so the president remains in office? Uh, look, the only function of a vice president is to be loyal to the president. So the vice president is not going to do it. Forget it. Uh, but when you sit down, hey, people, how many vote yes? Okay. How many no? Well, the no's have it. Okay, Mr. President, these 15 people voted to remove you from office. Okay, as President of the United States, I'm firing the Secretary of State, uh, Transportation, Commerce. Does he have that power? Yes. Yes. So when people tell me that's something that can be done, oh, get real. Like, like unless they're sure for certain, the only way I can see them doing that is that the president's in a coma. Okay. And he didn't have the time to sign the letter to the Congress. Say, hey, I'm not going to be able to do this. And then he's in a coma. Yeah, they'll sit down and say, the guy's in a coma. And, 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 and I'll bet you it won't be a unanimous vote. Yeah. So <laughs> other than that, to say by everybody, everybody knows that, look, even in his best days, Biden was not the smartest uh, kid in the, in the neighborhood. He wasn't. Uh, he was okay. He was above average, but he was not the smartest. If not, ask Clarence Thomas how he has smart. Uh oh, Jimmy, you broke up there. Uh, it, it is what it is. So we're going to have to deal with the factor that at this point we're going to need to know that no, they're not going to remove him. Uh, and, and the concern that I had was not so much if he could win the election. Let's say by some fluke he did. I don't think he has a mind to be president for four years. Mm. I don't. Right. Just simple as that. Hey, I've never been a Biden fan. Right. Biden lucked out and became president of the United States because of the pandemic. If it wasn't for the pandemic, he would have never been president. I, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, people were in a situation where, you know, friends and family were dying. And uh, people were concerned about the uh, Trump administration's uh, ability to get us out of the pandemic. Uh, however, you know, the Democrats changed the rules of engagement. They um, specifically, uh, and I'll use Florida as an example, uh, they did not have a presidential preference 
election or primary, which helped Biden secure the delegates for Florida. Uh, the Democrats moved South Carolina to the top of the uh, primary season rotation. They eliminated New Hampshire and Iowa. Uh, which has traditionally been the beginning of the primary season. Uh, the Democrats did a lot of things to um, support Biden the first time around. Uh, Senator Claiborne, or I'm sorry, Rep Representative Claiborne uh, secured South Carolina, and from there it was all Biden's. Uh, so the Democrats had laid down for uh, Biden, and uh, again, uh, for them to, and I'll say betray him uh, the way they did, um, it, it leaves me with uh, a concern about the party in general. Well, they didn't do it for Biden. Let's be historically correct. Prior to Biden going to South Carolina and getting his first primary, there was five others who were not, he wasn't even close. That's true. Okay. He wasn't even close. And there was a fear in the party that us liberals will take over and that would be the end of the Democratic Party. And the so-called right wing of the party, including Clubburn, went all the way out and said, let's bring in Biden because uh, we could we we believe we could sell him to the American public. We cannot sell Bernie Sanders. We cannot sell Kamala Harris, who was back then was a candidate. We tend to forget that. She was the first one out before the very first primary. Yes. Yeah, so uh, to be quite honest, it is something that you're right. The party did something to get it. As a matter of fact, the, he owes more to Como than he wants to admit. Como decided as a thing to eliminate and cancel the primaries in the state of New York, not because of the pandemic. That's the excuse that he used. And I'll call him a liar if he stands in front of me. That's not the reason. The reason he did that is because he knew that if he had that primary in New York after South Carolina and Bernie won. That was it. So basically, yes, the party did everything within its power to kill Bernie and give it and give it to, to, to Biden. And to be quite honest, it was with the condition that he forgot. He was told and he made a campaign promise that he would be a one term president because of his age. Then he went back on his word. And then, why are you betraying me? Because you went back on your word. Okay. And what he did is, after he, he announced on a Sunday, and in an hour after he announced, he endorsed Kamala and gave all the contacts to Kamala and and gave the, 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 uh, the, the, the power structure to Kamala. And that's why she was so effective to get everything in line in less than two weeks. Yeah. And it also helped to have uh, Obama's uh, old uh, campaign team behind her, too. Yeah, well, the, but the Obamas took their time on that. Yes, they That's did. Good, they took That's their true. time. They did. They took their time, uh, you know. And don't tell me they didn't know about it. Don't tell me they were expecting some other candidate. They took their time, which has pissed off a lot of people in Kamala's campaign. Okay? Yeah. And to be quite honest... He went into the month of October to start campaigning for her. He has not done much in July. He's not That's done right, much in Jimmy. August. He did not do much in September. That's it's right, Jimmy. now in October. So mm, don't get any started with Barack. There, there's some turmoil in the Democratic Party, I'm sure, or hash out after the election. Uh, oh, yeah. However, you know, it, it just is, again, it's been a very strange election, election cycle. It has. Indeed. And, 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 and we have a lot more to come because yeah. let me tell you something. If you think that the Republican is functional, we're not that far behind. I agree. We're not that far behind. And let me tell you something. Uh, a lot of people, once Kamala wins in November, are going to have to wait eight years for their, if they have any hope. And I I'll agree. say this, Kamala's more progressive than you give her credit for. Be prepared. Oh, I, I think so. I think so. Um, I mean, just, you know, what she was running for 
um, when she was in the primary for the Democratic nomination four years ago. I agree. I agree, Jimmy. She's and, toned uh, it down because it's in her best interest, but don't be surprised. Exactly. As a matter of fact, it's like the other day somebody said to jokingly, if you're going to call Biden uh, a liberal, it might as well act as a liberal because. We'll definitely get that with um, uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, we'll definitely get it progressive. It's coming. That's true. Yeah. And uh, I guess J.D. will have to take the L four years from now and try and do it and win it uh, eight years from now. We'll see. We'll see. Man, 20, 2032. Am I am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Yeah, and you'll be in your 50s. Oh, I am in my 50s, Jimmy. I'll be retired okay, with age. No, wait a minute. In 32, you'll be in your 60s, is what I meant to say. Yes. Oh, my. You'll be closing to get a check from well, green checks ain't Social Security. <laughs> Whoa. Let's slow down. <laughs> slow down. Let's let these next eight years go real slow for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. You, you, she wins. It will be in 32 be, before we have a real presidential race. Yeah. Yes, we'll see. We'll see about that. Maybe get back to some normalcy. <laughs> so what do you think we should talk about next week? I wish I had my pen and paper here to remind myself. Well, next week, I think we need to start talking about how is the Democratic Party in Florida doing nothing in this election? How it has not helped get out the vote or do anything? It's just there. I, it's time that somebody starts calling out the Florida Democratic Party and say, hey, what are you doing? Other than saying that you have a Democratic Party, have a chair, vice chair, and this and that. What are you doing? Because you're doing nothing. I've seen nothing coming from, from the party at all. For Debbie, for Amendment 3, for Amendment 4, nothing. That's one. The other thing that I think it's time to start talking about is that we're going to be closer and we might have a better view of how things look in the swing states. I, I want to address the swing states in the last three weeks because after that, there's no sense of talking about them because they become useless to us. Okay. All okay. Right. That sounds good. I just sent myself a note. I forgot. I'm on the computer here. I could just type in a note and send it to myself. So I'll have that prepared. We'll have the studio all set up. Uh, I like the fact that uh, our studio's been updated. Uh, so uh, the same link to join the studio, Jimmy, uh, that you used uh, today, uh, you can use the next time. And I'll have everything ready to go. And again, Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining me and doing this uh, series. Uh, we've gotten some really good hits on it. I'm waiting for some uh, interesting comments. Uh, however, um, people are watching and paying attention, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Not a problem. We're here for that. And be safe, please, please. Oh, please. Definitely. To all of our viewers and listeners, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you for watching and listening. Like and comment. We want to hear your comments and subscribe. And as Jimmy said, here in Florida, be safe. We have Hurricane Milton on its way. So please take care. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of your community. And uh, we'll see you the next time. Be, be safe. Take care. You too, Jimmy. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.